Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and in today's video we are going to be going through a grade 11 level question for a past paper or an exam and we're going to be focusing in on immunity and the group of protista in this question. Please note that this is an easier level question so if you'd like to try and challenge yourself with a harder level I've also posted that question and I've linked it above so you can go through and attempt that harder question. And if you'd like to try the questions now before we begin, please pause the video, attempt the questions, and then I will go into breaking down them, showing you how to answer them correctly to get full marks, and then at the very, at the very end of the video, I'm going to give you the memo. Now, as always, if you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so that you can get the freshest content on Tuesdays and Thursdays for all biology students from grade 8 to 12. Now, as I mentioned, this is an easier question, and the main reason why it's fairly easy is because it's going to be based off this paragraph that they've provided with a few little questions here or there that you will need to have some content knowledge in order to answer them adequately. Starting off with the paragraph, let's quickly run through it and pick out some key aspects. So it says, most important of the tropical diseases. Malaria, which is what we're going to be dealing with, has been called the most important of the tropical diseases by the World Health Organization in 1990. It leaves a heavy toll of illness and is lethal, especially to children. It poses a risk, particularly to business travels, tourists, and immigrants. Now, we get something called imported cases of malaria are being increasingly seen in non-endemic Non-endemic means that the particular disease is not from this area and it shouldn't be found in this area. And they're telling us that it's Europe and North America. So in other words, we are seeing malaria in Europe and North America where we shouldn't. And it probably has something to do with the business travels and the tourists. People by accident bringing mosquitoes across, whether they be in their clothing, in their luggage, perhaps it's on animals that are in boats. So there's some kind of transfer that's happening here. Now, it says in many parts of Africa, people are infected so frequently that they develop a degree of acquired immunity. That's that little bit of knowledge now we need about what is acquired immunity. And they may become what we call asymptomatic carriers of the infection. Now, epidemics are most frequent in a rural area, and the global distribution is mostly concentrated near the equator. So they're just letting us know where we see the highest levels of malaria. Let's get into the questions now. So if we take a look, it says, name the vector of malaria. Now, we need to know what the word vector means, right? Because if we don't know what it means, we actually don't know what answer to give. Remember, a vector is an organism, an animal, even a plant that spreads disease, but doesn't necessarily experience any of the symptoms. And our answer here that we're looking for is mosquitoes. And so they are the vectors of malaria because they carry malaria, but they don't have any signs or symptoms. In other words, they don't get sick. They make other animals sick. For number two, it says list two symptoms of malaria. Now, remember, this is not going to be able to take it from the paragraph up here because there's no information over here. So this is requiring us to know a little bit about this information beforehand, but it's very simple, something that you would have learned in class, and it can be any kind of symptom whatsoever, something like malaise or lethargy, fever, night sweats. There's a whole long list that you would have learned in class. For question three, it says, suggest two reasons for the high incidence of malaria infections in Central Africa. In other words, why are we seeing so many infections in uh, Central Africa? Now, what they're asking you here, everybody, is to suggest. It means come up with an idea of why malaria is so prevalent in Central Africa. So now you need to take a big, broad idea of Africa and you need to think, okay, why is malaria spreading in Central Africa by the equator? Well, they have high rainfall and where do mosquitoes reproduce? In pools of water. Uh, they have inadequate health care. So it means that people who are not treated for malaria quick enough can spread it to mosquitoes and then those mosquitoes spread it to other people. It might be the lack of infrastructure and the lack of hospitalization, the lack of awareness. In other words, knowing enough about malaria to stop it spreading, using mosquito nets, wearing long pants and clothes. So you need to give two reasons why malaria is so prevalent in Central Africa.
You might also want to mention the conditions are just right. If you're not going to talk about the water and the rainfall, you can talk about the temperature and you can talk about the conditions are just right for malaria to grow. For question four, it says, give one reason why malaria poses a risk to business travelers. So now you've got to think, how does malaria pose a, a travel risk for people who are traveling for business? Well, think of it like this. People are coming from other countries into Central Africa to do work, to do business. And what's happening? They are gaining the infection. They're getting malaria while they're there. And then there's a possibility that they're taking malaria back to their home country. Now, remember how malaria works. If a non-infected mosquito bites you and you have malaria, that malarial infection goes into the uh, mosquito and then that mosquito can go off and bite somebody else in your country. And so that's probably what's happening where we're seeing malaria show up in Europe and in North America. Now, you can also base this off your answer um, from the paragraph where it speaks about the fact that people who actually live in Africa um, have a degree of acquired immunity, which means that they develop less symptoms or no symptoms. So what you can say is that travelers from Europe or North America may experience more severe symptoms because they haven't been exposed, so they, their bodies are not used to um, the infection. They don't know how to deal with the infection. It's only for one mark, so you don't need to give too much detail. Let's go into the next question. Number five, describe how acquired immunity is achieved. Now, this is for three marks. This is a big question, but it's a nice, easy question, actually, because all you need to do is tell me how do you get acquired immunity, and it's in three steps. The word describe means you need to tell me how why and when or where it happens. So how do you acquire immunity? When does it happen? And where does it happen? The final question we're going to look at here is define the term asymptomatic. Now, when we speak about asymptomatic, we are speaking about individuals that have no symptoms. So that's what the A part in the beginning means. It means abnormal, like different, like not having. So if you don't have any symptoms, what does it mean? And in the passage, they're saying that people become asymptomatic carriers of the infections. They say it just over here. What that means is they carry the disease, but they feel uh, or experience no symptoms of malaria. Now, here is the expected memo that came with this particular question. You can have a look at uh, the memo and mark your own answers. As you can see for question 2.3.2, uh, there was quite a lengthy list here that you can pick from. You only need to mark the first two. In other words, don't give four, only give two, please, because um, that's what we're looking for. And likewise, for the second question over here, mark the first two. Um, sometimes there can be more of these. They've just given you like perhaps the bare minimum. If you also come up with a really good one that maybe the teacher or the examiner didn't think of, they probably would add it to their memo. And um, lastly, let's also have a look. I want to draw your attention to question 235's answer. This is the explanation on an acquired immunity. So this is where you have to have knowledge about being exposed to a natural infection where you provide uh, or you produce antibodies to fight off a disease. Those antibodies remain in your body. And then the next time you're infected, uh, infected uh, you can fight off that disease. And as it says here, you can have any three of these four answers. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it will definitely help you study and prepare for your tests or exam coming up on this topic. If you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, turn your notifications on because I post Tuesdays and Thursdays for grade 8 to 12s. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.